Hey guys, this is my January wrap up. So for the month of January, I read six books and they were all pretty awesome. So I'm really happy about my reading month in January. So let's start right now. I read, I don't have the actual book with me because I actually lent it out to someone. That's how much I loved it. But I'll put a picture of it right here. And that was Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Guys, this book was amazing. I gave it a five stars. So it was the, my first book of the year and it was my first five star rating of the year. It was amazing. It's a story about a woman who is living in a world where you cannot look outside. You, can, you have to wear a blindfold if you travel outside. There's something that if you see it, if you look at, see it or if you look at it, it will kill you or it'll make you go crazy and kill yourself basically. Um, so this woman has these two kids and she's trying to travel to a better place where she feels will be safer for her and her family. But she has to do the whole journey while blindfolded. Guys, this, <laughs> this book was amazing. It kept me on my toes. I was thinking about it long afterwards and it just like, oh, it was so good. I highly recommend you go pick up Bird Box. Such a good read. I also read By Your Side by Casey West. This book comes out in February actually. This was an arc. And guys, this book was really good. I gave it, I did give it a three star um, because it wasn't like my favorite contemporary like YA romance that I've ever read. But a three star is a very, it's a, it was a very solid book. Uh, it's about this girl, Autumn, who is in a library with her friends and then by some weird happening, she gets locked in the library and it's a holiday weekend so the library's not going to be open until that Tuesday or something like that. So she's locked in there for three whole days and along in there with her is a boy named, what was his name? Dax. Dax. So her and Dax are trapped in this library together and this is just kind of their story and this book surprised me. Um, there were some twists and turns in here that I really wasn't expecting, so I really did enjoy that part. Uh, I think part of the reason why I gave it such a, not a low rating, but I didn't give it like a four star rating or a five star rating, was because I read this immediately after reading Bird Box, where like, the woman in Bird Box was like traveling down a river with a blindfold and her two kids blindfolded in her canoe, trying to like, fight off all these weird things that might kill them and it was like a true survival story and this was like this teenage girl like this rich teenage girl who's locked in a library oh what was me my life is awful so it was kind of hard <laughs> to like really get invested in this after just having read bird box like a true survival story like there was one part in this book she's like we only have one protein bar and this has to last us all week i'm like Let's, let's, let's see how you do in, in the bird box world because honey child, no. <laughs> so it was hard, but that put us aside. I think if you are into YA contemporary romances, you will really enjoy this. This will be maybe one of like your top favorite reads of, of a contemporary romance because Casey West just, she does a really good job. Like she just writes really good YA romances. So, yes. Also, there was no insta-love in this, which I really enjoyed. I'm, I'm so glad she didn't just, like, fall madly in love with the boy she was trapped in the library with, and there, it wasn't like that at all. So, I definitely recommend this book. Just don't read Bird Box before reading this. Next, we have a book that I was so excited to read, and then as I was reading it, I was like, oh my god, this book is awful, and then, like, the last 100 pages, I was like, oh my god, I love this book. <laughs> And it was The Thousandth Floor by Katherine McGee. I picked this book up originally because the cover was really pretty and the synopsis reminded me of Gossip Girls. Basically, it's like these rich kids who live in this huge high-rise building. So it's set in the future. I think 3,000... 2,118. So it's set in the future and it's not like a dystopian world or anything like that where the world has come to an end. It's just that New York is now all in a high-rise. So it's a whole city 
in a high rise and the lower levels are like you know the lower like socioeconomic status and then the middle ranges are kind of like suburbia and then the top floor is like Upper East Side, Manhattan's elite, like Gossip Girls, right? And so the story takes place with a lot of different perspectives, like four or five perspectives. Um, you get a perspective of someone on the lower level, like the hundredth floor, you, and then you get a perspective of the girl who lives on the thousandth floor, and then so. But a lot of the people in this book, they um, they're up on the higher floor, so it's just kind of their like luxurious life. This is definitely like a, you know, like a guilty pleasure read. But so one of the things that I really liked about this book was, you know, the the rich, scandalous lives. I just I love that. I'm a Gossip Girl fan. But I also really liked oh who was the character? What was his name? Watt. Oh my gosh. Watt was amazing. He like built this robot and the robot was like in his head and like you're not supposed to have robots like artificial intelligence but he has this one and like it was just really cool and like Watt kept me reading this book when it got super 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 boring in the middle. It did. I was like really bored in the middle of this book and then the last hundred pages I could not put it down and I loved it and this is going to be a series. I think it's going to be a trilogy. And like in the middle of this book, if you would have asked me if I'm picking up the next one, I would have been like, heck no. But after finishing it, I have to pick up the next one. It's like, I'm really excited for it to come out. So I gave this book three stars because the ending and just how much I wanted to keep reading that last 100 pages. And the beginning was really, really intriguing too. It was just that middle, that middle part in here. I'm just like, it's a little bit too long. But hopefully the next book will be even better and it won't have that lull in the middle, but I'm really excited to pick up the next one. All right, I also read Everybody Sees the Ants this month. This is by A.S. King. I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed this story. This followed Lucky who he was being bullied really bad by a boy in his neighborhood and um, so him kind of like grappling with that and trying to figure out how to deal with that. It's very much like a coming of age story but this is also a magical realism book so when he goes to sleep at night he dreams he is in Vietnam with his grand great grandfather who was MIA missing in action in Vietnam and so he's he's trying to save his grandpa and like bring him back through his dreams with him sounds really weird I know but like so he will do all these things with his grandpa in like in the Vietnam jungle and then when he'll wake up he'll have like different remnants from his dreams so it, it's like really happening I guess um and so those kind of dream scenes are interspersed into this book and I loved the story so I gave this a four star I took off a star because it was not a five star read for me and I think it was because of the magical realism I'm a very much I'm a reader where like I need it to be either like it's fantasy it's explained there's a magic system or it's just fiction and like this like in between just for me personally I couldn't like get on board with it 100% because I'm someone who like I need it I need to know why these things are happening and at the end I need those things to be explained to me like why they happen so it was not the case with this book um, so I found myself when he was in Vietnam in his in the dream scenes I'm just like okay yeah 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 let's get just get to real life I just want to know what's happening in the here and now because I really enjoyed the story of how he was dealing with being bullied and his his dad he has a really hard bad relationship with his dad and his mom she's she's coping with you know her failing marriage the best that she can and it was just I loved like the real-time story the dream scenes just weren't quite for me um, I think I will give another A.S. King book a chance I know that they're all magical realism maybe this one just wasn't you know the one for me but I really really did enjoy this book I gave it four stars four stars I also read this month The Darkest Corners by Kara Thomas. This is a story about a girl who, when she was little, 
she witnessed a, a an abduction not really a murder but her older her friend's older cousin was abducted from their house when she was watching them and they thought they thought that her murder was a string of murders that had been happening in their town by a serial killer so Callie along with her cousin they kind of helped the police in finding a suspect for the murder of this girl um, and you know they're young and they're easily swayed to say certain things and so the book takes place when Callie is now 18 about to go off to college and she goes back home to her small little town that she had moved away from after the whole serial killer thing when she was eight she goes back home because her father has died her father has been in prison for years and she kind of being back in her old town makes her think a lot about the serial killer and the man they put in jail and she's really tr starting to wonder if is he really the killer and when one of their friends is killed in the same way that the serial killer once killed those girls all those years ago and came up murdered they really wondered if they had done the right thing because the man who was you know supposedly doing all these murders all those years ago he's locked up in jail so it couldn't have been him so it's kind of like a mystery thriller they're trying to figure out who did it what's going on who's actually killing these people these girls and this book kept me guessing the entire time like I there was not one point in this book where I had it figured out and I was like okay predictable I, like literally the last even the last page the last page in this book was a surprise for me so on that this book was well written it it kept me guessing and I am pretty good at predicting plot twists and storylines in thrillers so I have to give my hats off to this book for I was not able to predict anything I gave it four stars out of five because there were some loose ends that weren't exactly tied up but I can look past that because this book was really good and kept me guessing and like I had to get to the end to find out who did it. And the last book that I read for the month of January was The Selection by Kara Cass. Guys, I gave this book five stars. <laughs> I know, I know that it's like, talk about guilty pleasures. This was a guilty pleasure. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I liked it. Like, there's no world building. There's no real, like, character building. But it just was so good. And I just, I had to, like, immediately after finishing this, I went on Amazon and I bought the next one. Like, I just could not wait to start the next one. Um, it was just really good. I'm sure everyone knows the synopsis, but unless, in case you haven't heard of it, uh, there's 35 girls competing to win the heart of the prince. It's it's The Bachelor, basically, guys. Only set in the future and set in like a royalty kind of, you know, they're royal. So, guys, it was so good. I loved it so much. Alright guys, so those are the books that I read for the month of January. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've read. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!